Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Learn Someone of Scott Selections here for Wednesday, December 30th. For getting today's play, that a quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up a nice win in college basketball as we gave out Rutgers minus two and a half and minus one twelve on FanDuel. The line was pretty it was pretty crazy. We got it at two and a half, ended up going all the way up to four. Then you ended up having a late announcement that Ron Harper Jr., the best player on Rutgers, ended up getting injured in practice earlier that day, and he was officially ruled out. The line plummeted to roughly minus one and a half. And Rutgers, even though Harper did not play, won the game by five. So they ended up covering the spread. Nice win overall. Rutgers, definitely a very, very solid team in the Big Ten. And that backcourt is filthy, whether Harper plays or not. You had a couple other guys who stepped up, Geo Baker being one of them. You also had Mathis, who was absolutely fantastic, and they ended up getting the job done. So nice win there in college basketball. Before today's play, I looked at the college basketball card, wasn't really a fan of anything. Looked at the NBA card, wasn't a fan of anything. So for that reason, we're going to be looking at a college football matchup here. It's going to be taking place between Florida and Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. And for this matchup here, we're going to be going with Oklahoma in the first half. Minus three is available on Bet Online at minus 110. A time recording of 1.40 a.m. Eastern time. Couple reasons why I like Oklahoma in this spot. First of all, this line, if you shop around, whether it's the full game, whether it's the halftime line, make sure you shop your lines because there's a lot of disparity going on. For example, in the full game, Oklahoma is mostly available market-wide at four and a half. However, Bet Online has five, and DraftKings right now has six. So if you like Florida, you can find plus six available on, on DraftKings. But that just shows you an example here. You have one book that's offering one and a half point differential between other books. So it's pretty crazy. First half lines are most available at Oklahoma minus three and a half. However, Bet Online does have minus three. So that's the line we're going to be using for the play today. And a couple reasons why I like Oklahoma in this spot. First of all, I know Oklahoma started the year off pretty terribly in the Big 12. However, they have been playing a lot better lately as they enter this game in the middle of a massive winning streak. As after losing two of their first three games, they have won each of their last seven, including the conference title game against Iowa State in a revenge game. They have done really well so far over the past couple of months. Meanwhile, Florida was doing really well, potentially had a shot there to make the college football playoff, but then the wheels kind of fell off there as they ended up losing at home to LSU in a pretty pathetic loss as LSU was using a true freshman quarterback by three. That was the thrown shoe game. They ended up losing in the SEC title game to Alabama by six. That was respectable. Lost by six, scored 46 points, ended up giving up 52, and now they are stuck here in the Cotton Bowl. Now, you might be wondering, well, you can't really hold the loss to Alabama against them. They fought tough, and I do agree with you on that. However, it seems like the players on Florida weren't really interested in playing in the Cotton Bowl, especially after they had a shot at playing in the playoff. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that Florida's top three uh, weapons in the receiving core are going to be out for this game. Kadarius Toney, everyone knows, great slot receiver, also used a little bit in the backfield occasionally for big playability. Definitely one of the biggest weapons in this Florida uh, group at receiver. And he had 70 receptions for 984 yards and 10 touchdowns in the regular season. He's not playing in this game. He opted out because he's getting ready for the draft. Tight end Kyle Pitts, everyone knows, is being arguably the best tight end in all of college football. 43 receptions for 770 yards and 12 touchdowns. He also dealt with a couple injuries during the season, but he was great all year long. He's also not playing. And then you also have the second best receiver at the wide receiver group, not including tight ends, in Trayvon Grimes, who had 38 receptions for 589 yards and nine touchdowns. He is also not playing. So Florida's missing their top three receivers or top three threats in the passing game for this matchup. And what that means is you're going to be seeing a ton of reps for a bunch of true freshmen. And I think that will definitely lead to some problems, whether it's going to be timing, or whether it's just the fact that I don't think they might be ready to handle this big moment in the Cotton Bowl against Oklahoma Secondary, which has actually played pretty well as of late. But looking at Florida, of course, Kyle Trask is a very solid quarterback. There's a reason why he's one of the finalists for the Heisman. But if you're taking away his top three weapons for this game, I think you're going to see a ton of miscommunications in this matchup. Florida seems like they're kind of treating this game not really their fault, but because you have so many people opted out in the one position group, you're going to be forced to rely on a ton of inexperienced guys, and then that will be a massive problem. And I think that Florida will start off slowly offensively in the first half as a result, whereas the same point, their defense, which has been awful over the last two weeks, Alabama scoring 50-plus, and they also give up 37 to LSU. Now is going to be missing one of their best defensive backs, as Sean Davis, who is tied – for the most interceptions on the team with two, is also not playing in this game. So in addition to the three receivers or the three main weapons, you have one of their best defensive backs also not playing in this game. 
Florida's defense, we already know, is not very good. I think their offense will struggle, uh, at least early on, before making some adjustments. And for that reason, I think Oklahoma should be able to pounce on the opportunity. And the defense will look pretty solid overall. They definitely looked really good lately. If you look at who Oklahoma has played, definitely can make the argument that their strength of schedule hasn't been amazing because you also have games like Kansas and Baylor in there. However, they only gave up 21 points to Iowa State, who was the top 10 team in the country at that point. And they also only gave up 13 points to Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State just scored 30-plus against Miami and ended up winning a bowl game yesterday. So Miami uh, is a pretty decent team overall. I think you can make the argument that they're definitely overrated. But as a whole, pretty solid win by Oklahoma State there, and they definitely showed that they have some offensive talent. And I do think that Oklahoma only holding them to 13 points is definitely impressive. Now, Florida, of course, with Trask is usually capable of going for 40-plus in any given game. But the issue that I have here is just with all the people and all the parts missing, I think Florida will definitely look, I would say, a little bit out of sorts offensively early on. And Oklahoma, the reason why I personally want to take the first half instead of the full game is the fact that it seems like under Lincoln Riley all year long, this team has issues playing for a full 60 minutes. This team seems to get up to really big leads, and they kind of fall apart in the second half and take their foot off the gas. So I'm a little bit concerned about laying four and a half right now with Oklahoma because I do think that Florida, who does play very, very hard under Dan Mullen, I think could potentially sneak through the back door there. But in the first half, I think Oklahoma should come out, punch them in the mouth, kind of like they did against Iowa State before taking their foot off and almost allowing Iowa State to come from behind and win. Oklahoma, though, has allowed less than 22 points in each of their last four games. They have been playing really solid defensively. And Oklahoma also, unlike Florida, does not really have many people who opted out of this game because of injury or because of NFL draft status. And they will be missing one of their best defensive backs in Trey Brown, who does have three interceptions on the year. But that's one cornerback who's going to be out for this game. Florida's missing three receivers and their second best defensive back. Definitely not exactly an ideal spot for Florida. So for that reason, for my play of the day in the Cotton Bowl, I'm going to be taking Oklahoma in the first half, minus three, which is available on Bet Online at minus 110. That's been Thomas Scott Selections. Good luck to all of you and your respective best today. Bye, everyone.